I've recreated a lot of what August Bradley built inside of Notion for his pillars, pipelines, and vaults, which was shared about three years ago. There's been lots of iterations, lots of changes as the apps have developed, but basing off of the original video, I've recreated as much as I can to the point where I then got bored because I didn't want to go any further. Um, so this is what I've come up with. So for those new to Obsidian, on the left, we have the left sidebar. We have the Bookmarks Core plugin, so that's Obsidian specific. The Files Core plugin, again, Obsidian specific. The Search option, which is a core plugin to search through any of the files inside of Obsidian. So the way Obsidian works is it's a folder, and inside of the folder, you can have other folders with files, which I'll go through later on. There is the ribbon on the left, which is where you have the settings, the help option, changing the vault, which is essentially changing between folders, similar to a Notion workspace. Then we have two different buttons, which I'll go through later on. In the main window, at the moment, we have one file open in one tab in one pane. We can click the plus button to add a new tab. We can then open any file we want. So if we want to open up that file again, we can have it open twice and I've got two tabs in one pane. And if I want, I can move this over to make it a split screen so I can have two or I can move it down the bottom so I can have two horizontal. I can add more tabs then more panes so you can customize the workspace quite a lot moving over to the far right we have the right sidebar also collapsible just like the left and this is the outline core plugin again obsidian specific and when we go into one of these files that has headings you can see it automatically detects the headings just like a table of content and when you click on them it takes you down to that part of the file and you can click drag to move the entire section so every word underneath that heading with it there is then the backlinks panel so if there is a file that links to something so this is the mindset and identity sculpting file the command center links to it and i can tell because it's in the backlinks of the mindset file so if i open up the command center that was holding control and click and i drag this over you can see these purple file names show that there is a link so the command center links out to mindset which means the mindset links back to the command center which is why it shows in the backlinks panel then if we go to the info tab these are the properties of the file so just like in notion you can have properties in a database file in obsidian every single file has the opportunity to add a property when you click on a property icon you can then change the property type to any of these default in obsidian but obsidian has a massive community which actually creates plugins to enhance features inside of the core obsidian and the calendar plugin down here is actually one of those so if i click on the 13th it takes me to today's daily note and you can see now inside of the info tab for the properties these are all different types of properties inside of this file if i go to the bottom left settings tab go to the editor and then come down into properties and documents i can show those properties if i want so now they're at the top and i can toggle them closed or open however i'm going to keep them hidden because of another community plugin i'm using so looking in the settings tab we have the options section we have the core plugins section, which are built by the Obsidian developers, and then the community plugins section, which are these community developed plugins, which enhances what Obsidian can already do. The calendar plugin, letting me navigate between daily notes and weekly notes. Do you see this note hasn't been created, so I can create a new weekly note. And what that's done is, is created a weekly note, but there's already properties inside of this file because it's used a template to create the weekly note. And if we come down, you can see we have periodic notes as a plugin, and that lets us create daily notes with a template, weekly notes with a template, monthly, quarterly, and yearly notes all with templates so opening up the templates folder we can see day template if i middle click on my mouse it opens it up as a new tab and inside the day template there are these properties already added with information in so this is a day class if we go to the monthly template the same thing we now have different properties for the month with a monthly review class and going down to that weekly template we now have the week information with the weekly review class and if you want you can add any text so headings files words inside of the template when you create a new file it will then be added so if we add this heading to the weekly template things to think about then you can see the 47th week hasn't been created so we click on that 
we create that weekly note, now we have the heading inside of week 47 and week 46 still doesn't have the heading because we created the file without the template. Now I don't need this file so I'm going to right click on the tab and delete file and if we look inside the periodic notes it's actually creating these files in a specific folder so we've specified what folder the new file is going to be created in and if we go over and look at the main pillars Daily tracking is a database inside of August's Notion. So daily tracking is where the daily notes go. So you can see there's the sun icon to say this is a daily note. Inside of the main pipelines, we then have the quarters, the weeks and the years with all of those notes in those folders. So you can see this file, 2023, week 46, is inside the 2023 folder, which you can see the breadcrumb at the top, main pipelines, weeks and then the file name. This next plugin, you can see Commander, lets us add buttons all around Obsidian. And in this case, I've only added one, and this is a plus button to create a new note. So instead of having to create a new note in a database and find the database page, I can push the plus button and it gives me an option whether I want to add a task, content, book, media, pillar, knowledge, habits, client, or project. And this is something I've created, which you can customize, of course. Or because Obsidian is more flexible than Notion, you can go into the hotkeys and add a hotkey to it. So for me, if I push Control N, it brings up that same window. I can type task, it gives me the option enter, now I'm making a new task which I can name. But before I do that, if we go to the settings, that has been created using the quick add plugin which allows us to quickly add new files. This is a folder, so I have a new note folder. And this folder, because of the electric signal, has a hotkey on it. And inside of the task, if I go to the settings, you can see exactly the same as the calendar plugin. I have a template called task template. And then when I add a new task, it brings up that template. It puts it in this folder. So the main pipelines action items folder. So if I type new task for today, click on OK. I've now created a new task with that name. And if we go into the pipelines and the action items, you can see new task for today. So if I middle click on my mouse, here is the task. But of course, we don't want to be going through the files and folders to see everything. So we have August Bradley's dashboards. So coming into the action zone, also added into the bookmarks over here, we've got an inbox. So the three tasks that don't currently have a date are being shown at the top. Then the actions section, which you can toggle closed and open. And there is that new task that we added because it's actioned for today. So the due date is today. It's not been complete. There is no priority and there's no next task. So it's not dependent or it's not making another task dependent, which August has inside of Notion. And these are done through the community plugin data view. So this data view community plugin lets us query. So search for any file in a folder inside of your vault. If I hover over, you can see it's black because the file is empty. But if I was to add some text into the file, so say this is an important link for the task to be complete. Now, if I hover over, you can see it's showing me the file and it actually lets me click on the link without having to go to the task page. Now, unlike Notion, because these are queries and not databases, we can't edit the information inside of these results, but we can using a different plugin called Metadata Menu by clicking the icon. And these are all of those properties that we can now edit. So is it completed? At the moment, no. If I tick this to say, yes, it has been completed, now the done will go to a tick. So this Metadata Menu plugin, if we come into the settings, looks for all of the classes, so the class type, which is sort of like data bases in Notion, looks for the class inside of the property. So if we look at this task, you can see at the top, it's got a class and the class type is task and the task class gives us all of this information. However, you can see there is a sun on this file and that's because the class is different. This class is day and day has different properties such as week, diet, to sleep, awake, etc, etc. So if we click on the tick, let's say the priority is actually going to be scheduled. And this is a drop down that we've created. It's now scheduled. And now it's gone to the top of the list because that's the sort order I have inside of the query to bring scheduled up the top. If you want to see every single task, metadata menu actually gives you that option. If you click on the class, so I'm going to click on task, it gives me a table view 
of all of the tasks in the vault with something that looks a little bit more similar to what you'll see inside of Notion, giving you the option to add links to goals, pillars, and everything else that you'd want, plus the tick boxes inside of the view here. The final class field setting is where you can customize and change all of those fields. So the properties inside of the file can be customized here. So if we come in, we can add or change the list and we can change where it gets the items from. So this is next in line. So we want a link to a file to action items. So it's looking for any page inside of the main pipelines action items folder. If I click on the new task today icon, go next in line, click on the link, it's now looking for just the tasks rather than every single file. And we can search for new tasks for today. So this is actually saying that next in line is the same task, which obviously logically doesn't make sense. It's just an example, but this is what you can do. Now coming back to the action zone, I can see, okay, this is the task I want to do. That is next in line also giving us those options. Moving down, if I open up tomorrow, we now have tomorrow's task. So we've got one that's called waiting on. It's got no priority. It's not been complete. Due date. This was another task. Priority done, etc. Nothing next. And you can see the due date is tomorrow so only tomorrow whereas these are only today as a note for those curious yes you can filter out tasks that are done or not done i've left it in so it's easier for me to show and explain what's going on and there will be a link to the template in the description below for you to play around with exactly how all of this works if i then go to upcoming week we've now got all of the tasks for the upcoming week so this is today and tomorrow and the next seven days you can see 13 14 14 13 if i change this new task and say this is actually due on the 17th that is still this week so you can see the date is now the 17th and it's still showing in the upcoming week because it's the next seven days the waiting on list is exactly the same as inside of notion so we've got these three tasks are waiting on because if we go into the options waiting is true so it means it's waiting on something. This is one of those examples that it can be further automated in various different ways, but keeping it very simple, it's just a tick box. And you can see these are the next ones in line. And then we have the query below, which is looking for dependent tasks. So these are tasks that are dependent on another task. So this one is second in line because this is following first. And the way this is done is if we click on first, you can see next in line is second. So second knows that it's got something following and the same with third. So if we go into those files, this may look a little bit scary for those unfamiliar, but because all of this is just a text file that you can always save, this is what it is. So it's just saying, yep, second is before this. So the third is following second. That's the terminology August has used, but that's how it works inside of Obsidian on the back side, as it were. So I can close that down. Then client operations is just a normal query looking for all clients inside of the client folder. So if we go to main pillars, we have client operations. There's that client and that's actually being shown here. So you don't need to go through the files and folders. A similar process for the project. You can see the different icon. This is a video project. So it has the video properties. This is a regular project, so just the regular project properties. This example is actually missing one of the fields, so I can insert missing fields using this button here. And now that field's there, so I can then add a number for the completed. So if I say zero, tick, now I've zero out of 20 completed this project, which actually comes in handy if you're looking for something like the goal outcomes and a progress bar. So we've got completed six out of 20, which is... 30%. I'm again going to reiterate, this is just a proof of concept. Yes, you can do in it Obsidian with various levels of extensibility, complexity, as much as you want. I personally don't use this. This is just, again, proof of concept. So back to the command center, you can see we've got the pillar pipeline pyramid. So if I come in here, we have more queries, this time looking for just the year review. Then inside the year review, we have the links to the values and you can see a rocket, another different icon with different properties in here. So you can see we're going to look for goal outcomes. I click on the link and when I click on the link, it shows me just the goal outcomes. There's only three in this example vault. And for clarity, if I click on the settings, it's because again, it's looking for the folder of goal outcomes. So it's only showing me those three files. And there is the outcome link to the year. So if I go to the year, you can see there's the one goal outcome. There's the two value goals. And that's why it's showing them inside of the query. And then there's some notes for something else. 
uh, if we come down to milestones, same sort of thing. I did a thing or I didn't do a thing. Pillars, these are all of the pillars inside of the main pillars and pillars folder down here. So these are all the pillars in here. Very similar with the value goals, with the outcome goals. All of this inside of Notion is databases. Inside of Obsidian, it's a combination of data view and metadata menu, giving you the same features with a little bit more flexibility with what you can do when it comes to properties, because you can see if I go into the projects, this is just the project information, but videos have a specific pipeline. So if I want a podcast project, it can be a project and then podcast specifics and then project and then content video specific or whatever that is. So in Notion, it has to be in a database, whereas in Obsidian, it can be in multiple classes at once. And coming down the bottom, you can see we've now got more sort of like quick tab bar things. I personally wouldn't do this inside of Obsidian because in Obsidian, you can uh, search this way using the quick switcher, which is a hotkey to search through things. And I personally would use a canvas for navigating all this sort of stuff, but that's something Notion doesn't have. So I don't have it here. Moving down to the reviews again, very similar process. I'm not going to bore you by saying the same thing, but this is essentially what August Bradley's system is. It's lots of data views, linked data views inside of files, which is just data view queries over and over. Go back to the command center mindset identity is an empty file with headings again we have the headings to navigate us backwards and forwards and moving into content production we have the content ideas query and content production query i just changed the name very quickly for those curious this is what it looks like it does look kind of scary if you're unfamiliar with this but it's very simple make a table call it content production have a column status type channel so status type channel content production name search from that folder filter where the pipeline doesn't equal idea generation resource because i don't want those and then sort it in this order ready to post then post production etc etc one two three four five six seven in ascending order now those inside of notion may use the calendar view august bradley seems to use the calendar view i personally use a calendar app for that called morgan but you can do it in obsidian so you can see i push the calendar icon and now we have a calendar view for tasks if you want it for projects as well you can make it for projects as well and if we go down to the bottom left settings this is the full calendar plugin you can see we've got a folder the action items folder as a calendar it's just a, a black calendar you can change the color to whatever color and you can add more calendars for projects different types of projects it's again <laughs> fully extensible then for completeness we have plugin update tracker and what this does is it lets you know if there's a, an update to a plugin down in the bottom right you can see there's a tick next to a plug and that's just to keep all of the community plugins up to date and then templater is a community plugin that enhances what the default template plugin does and inside of the task template i have that to automatically bring in the title and today's date when i make a new task so i don't have to manually do it and you can automate as much or as little of this process as you want but that is my brief explanation and recreation of august bradley's notion inside of obsidian and if you want to go further with this let me know inside the comment section below and i can help you out or join the discord and we can have a discussion about that there